This hour, the podcast is exclusively sponsored by my good friends at Advantage Gold. Advantage Gold is a five-star rated gold company with one-of-a-kind customer service. And when it comes to gold and precious metals, Advantage Gold is the only company I'll work with. Call Advantage Gold today and make sure you let them know that Mark Levin sent you. And now, let's begin. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting them from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. Do you realize, folks, that this guy, Mike Gallagher, is going to retire early in Wisconsin? Just like this real head case, Buck out of Colorado has stepped down, and really, thank God he has, but anyway... You understand that the Republicans have a one-vote majority in the House now? They expelled this guy Santos, who was a reprobate. But why would you expel him when in the Democrat side, Menendez is hanging on by his fingernails, has been charged with uh, all kinds of, of crimes? I mean, real crimes. You know, it's not like the Trump stuff where they're f- looking for crimes. I mean, real stuff. Gold bars in his jacket, you know, uh, Wiretaps, I guess, with the Egyptian government, that sort of stuff. So there's no hue and cry in the Senate among the Democrats to get rid of Menendez. No hue and cry among the Democrat Party propagandists and Hamas wing of the media. Nothing. Nothing. So the Republicans boot this guy Santos. Then Buck steps down. Now Gallagher's stepping down. One other guy stepped down. Now they get a one vote majority. One. I, 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 I don't even know what to say anymore. And with a one vote majority, Green, what is her name? Marjorie, uh, Marjorie Teller Green. Nice person. I've met her. She's been on the show with her book. She decides to take a step to remove the Speaker of the House. I am no fan of this deal that's been negotiated, period. If I were voting, I'd vote against it. I'd do everything I could to kill it. But ladies and gentlemen, the problem isn't a speaker. The problem is they don't have the votes. I don't know what Marjorie Taylor Greene or the others are doing to raise funds to elect more conservatives, whether in primaries or generally. Probably little to nothing. You have a one-vote majority. That's it. I'd say at least 30% of the Republicans in the House are so-called centrists or center-right. They're not us. And so it boggles my mind. What what is this? What are they doing? You're going to remove the speaker and replace the speaker with whom? What are you going to replace the speaker with? 
Who? Who is it exactly? You're not going to get who you want, whomever that is. Even the the director, the chairman, the Freedom Caucus said, what the hell is this? We reject this budget too. It's a horrible budget, but we're going to just keep doing the off with their heads thing? I mean, how long is this going to go on for? I don't know. You might recall I was the one who stood among the radio pygmies, the midgets, the dwarfs, and said, why are we removing Kevin McCarthy? Who proposed the most conservative border plan, the most conservative budget plan in modern legislative history. Why are we removing that guy? And so here we are. And so people may feel it's really good. It's gestalt, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, I'm going to file this, I'm going to file... You're not doing crap. If somebody came out today and not one of them did and said, you know what? I'm going to spend my time not just on my re-election, but making sure that conservatives are elected in these states and so forth so we have a buffer, we have a bigger majority, we can stop this. Not one of them said that. Not one of the so-called conservatives. They beat their chest. They pat themselves on the back. They say the country's going to hell. We know all this. We know all this. You're a congressman. You're a congressman. Now, if you can't literally do anything about it right now, and here's the deal. They're in a position where they really can't. They have a one-vote majority in the House And about a third of the Republicans in the House are wimps. What are you going to do? Turn to the Democrats? Then they should get the hell out of Washington and help elect conservatives. That's what they should do. Instead of running on TV and radio and beating their chest. How many more speakers are you going to go through? How many? So count me out on this. I'm sure the radio groups out there, well, groupies, factions, well, they think it's a great idea because they think that's what you want to hear. I tell you what I know. I don't know what you want to hear or you don't want to hear. I, I always assume you want to hear the truth or at least my view of what's going on. My view of what's going on is I don't know what these guys are doing. They make you think that by taking out the speaker... That they're actually doing something. Well, did they do something last time? No. So what are they doing now? Nothing. It's drama time again. We're losing our country. Well, there's not enough being done with the border. So impeach his ass, the guy in the White House. That's what you do. Well, we might lose that. So what? At least you'll, you'll focus the nation on an issue the Democrats don't even want to talk about. They're running from it. It's the second most important issue to the voters right behind. I mean, right behind the economy. In numbers we've never seen before. He should be impeached for every action he's taken in violation of law and the Constitution. I don't care what Jamie Raskin says. He's a head case. I don't care what Joe Scarborough says. He's an ignoramus. Who cares? So rather than focusing all their might on Biden, they're going to take out their speaker and achieve what? Exactly what? I want to know. I want to know. Where do you go from there? Nowhere. Nowhere. Now you'll have these little putians, these guys that have their, they're sitting at their, they're, uh, you know, computer, hoo, hoo, hoo. let me write this column. Let me look good here. Can I get this placed over here? How, uh, here's my end. Who cares? These people aren't the purists. They're not the constitutional conservatives. In many ways, they're self-promoters. You have to have a strategy. What are you going to do? You're going to have votes? On this speaker, he's not going to be removed. You got a one-vote majority. You actually risk Hakeem Jeffries becoming speaker. 
All you need is one of these nudniks out of the one third to say, you know what, I've had enough of these, you know, these Marjorie Taylor Green types. I'm voting with the Democrats. And maybe it's their swan song, and then I'm going to retire. I call these people boneheads. Because they never have a strategy. And they make the entire House Republicans look stupid. It's like funding Israel. We've got guys on this rules committee. Guys on this rules committee who won't do anything except what they demand in order to allow a vote to come out of the rules committee. Very earnest. Very earnest. We don't secure the border. If we don't start slashing the budget, we're not bringing it out. We want to bring it out. We've told the speaker there's a way we can do this. And, but, but they can't do it. They don't do it. They tell me this all the time. I've told the speaker this is what we really need to do. But you don't have the votes. You're not supported. You're not supported. You don't have the votes. And so we actually have a condition today, just as one little example, where Joe Biden is slow walking munitions to Israel, which is really quite sickening, immoral, unconscionable. He's an anti-Semite, and so is his party, and I'm not going to back off from that. You have to be deaf, dumb, and blind not to see it and hear it and all the rest of it. And then we have a couple of guys in the Rules Committee. We want to fund Israel. But we have to do it the right way. So you literally have now a couple of guys in the House Rules Committee and Joe Biden preventing the funding of Israel. That is, preventing the building of weapons that we then provide Israel to defend itself. Now, this is really fascinating to me. Stick with me. So what's the consequence of that? The consequence is this. Joe Biden is funneling Hundreds of billions of dollars into Iran by taking our foot off their throat, lifting the sanctions, allowing them to sell oil to whom? The communist Chinese who need their oil. He's paid $20 billion in the last six months to the Iranians by allowing the Iraqis to sell electricity to the Iranians. He paid $6 billion dollars in ransom for hostages to the Iranians. That's $26 billion, not even including the oil money, and Israel's sitting there begging for $14 billion. But don't worry, say the purists. They're not pure. They're stupid. They're in a box. And they say, we're not going to help. So Iran's getting money. Hamas is getting money. Hezbollah is getting money. The Houthis are getting money. And Israel, tiny little Israel, has to stand up for the entire West, all of Western civilization and the United States. And Biden's slow walking them in munitions. And I'll tell you why in a minute. And I've told you why over and over. And a couple of boneheads won't allow the proper vote on the money for Israel. And now the Democrats have turned on Israel. These so-called conservatives say they love Israel, but we have process and administrative issues. Completely missing the big picture. And here we are. Iran is swimming in money. The terrorists are swimming in money. Israel's desperate for weapons. The Republicans have no strategy, particularly the Self-appointed purists who are not constitutional conservatives. Some are. Most aren't. And the Democrat Party is full open, out of the closet, pro-Hamas, pro-Haran, anti-Israel, anti-Israel's government, and anti-Israel destroying Hamas. And now we're going to remove the speaker. And then what? Nothing. He won't be removed. The American people are going to lash out against the Republicans if this keeps up. They're going to lash out against the Republicans. They're going to lash out 
against their inability to actually get some things done. And they're going to lash out at this shenanigans, this, this bizarre headbanging when it comes to their speakers. I would fight the spending bill. I would vote against this spending bill. I would make it clear to some of the Republicans who voted for it that you will campaign against them in a primary, although many of these conservatives didn't take the opportunity to actually campaign against the rhinos in the primaries. They're all talk. They're all talk. They're no action. They got the Roberts rules of procedures down. They can block anything they want pretty much. But they can't do anything. They can't do anything. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Our once mighty dollars under siege from runaway inflation. For those still working, your paychecks buy less while costs for gas, food, cars, utilities skyrocket thanks to inflation. That's why I'm urging all my listeners to register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. It's a fantastic seminar. They'll teach you how to take steps to help guard your wealth from inflation using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and silver hold intrinsic value that should remain untouched by government manipulation. Folks, don't wait for the Fed's reckless policies to completely devalue the dollar and steal your life savings. Call now while free registration is open. I'm telling you, this is a fantastic seminar. Call 800-900-8000 right now. The Gold and Silver Summit could provide the vital insights we need to protect our families. 800-900-8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Always consult your financial and tax professionals. Want a little bit of good news? I did it again, Mr. Producer. Sorry. Are from our friends at uh, Breitbart. According to CNN survey today, former President Donald Trump is leading Biden by eight points in the key swing state of Michigan, with 50% support to Biden's 42%. And when third-party candidates are included, Trump still maintains a lead garnering 40% to Biden's 34%, a difference of six percentage points. Another 18% chose independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. So, of course, you know what Biden and the Democrat Party are trying to do right now? Destroy him. Won't even give him Secret Service protection. I've talked about this before. They're doing everything they can to keep him off the ballot. But they're for democracy, for crying out loud. Oh, yeah. They want to overthrow the elected government in Israel. They wanted to prevent Trump from being on the ballot. So they're still pursuing getting him in prison and bankrupting. And Robert Kennedy. Well, no Secret Service protection. Gee, even though his dad was assassinated, by the way, Mr. Bidus, you know who assassinated Robert Kennedy? Sirhan Sirhan. You know why he assassinated him? Palestinian. And you know why? Sirhan Sirhan, the Palestinian, assassinated Robert Kennedy? Among other reasons, he supported the state of Israel. Isn't that interesting that that doesn't come up anymore? I wonder why that is. The survey found that Biden's lead among minority voters is narrower, and he trails Trump by significant margins among independents and young voters. Oh, oh young voters. Gee, I thought I bought them off. I even defied the Supreme Court. I'm handing them half a trillion dollars. What the hell do these young whistleblower whippersnappers even want? All right, I got more. We'll be right back. Attention, fellow Americans, Mark Levin here with a warning and a solution. I feel like our country's being destroyed by out-of-control spending and debt thanks to Biden and the American Marxists. And your hard-earned savings and retirement could be at risk from their socialist schemes. That's why you should consider Advantage Gold the best of the best, a U.S.-based company that specializes in helping everyday Americans protect their wealth. They have a simple solution to help you even potentially grow your wealth despite the attacks from Washington. I urge you to register for their upcoming Gold and Silver Summit. It's fabulous. A free online event where you'll learn tips to help safeguard your finances by diversifying into physical precious metals. Call 800-900-8000. 
800 900 8000 Call them right now to sign up securely for this pivotal summit. It is crucial. Tell them Mark Levin sent you for a special bonus. Call 800 900 8000 right now. Performance may vary. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. Mark Levin, an unapologetic patriot and unapologetic constitutionalist. You can reach him at 877-381-3811. You folks know Mark Penn. He's been around a long time, about as long as I have. And uh, he's on Fox. He's elsewhere, but he's a straight shooter. He's been on my show in the past. Mark Penn, how are you, sir? Uh, Well, Uh, thank you for having me. My pleasure. You wrote a piece in The Hill, which I agree with 100%. Andrew Stein, the former president, Democrat of the New York City Council, wrote a piece in the New York Post, basically condemning his party. Um, You have others who have condemned that Schumer speech that he's giving aid and comfort to the terrorists, Hamas, who are trying to buy time and undermining the government of Israel. And I want to know, number one, so the American people know, what is your take on this? And number two, are you getting any pushback? Well, uh, just corrected, it was on foxnews.com. Uh, and, you know, look, I, I've known Senator Schumer for a long time. I actually have a lot of respect for him generally. Uh, and I was, and he's been a longtime supporter of Israel. And I was really stunned, you know, by, by his speech. Uh, and, and I think that, that somehow here in this election year, the administration position which was rock solid for Israel has deteriorated ever since 100,000 voters voted uncommitted in Michigan. The timing correspondence here couldn't be clearer. And, uh, and, and I think that it is, frankly, I think it's it, the politics of this is wrong in the first place because Americans really do support Israel, do support the funding for it, and the swing voters are real supporters uh, of Israel. Uh, and second, the, the values here of not supporting uh, appropriately a Democratic ally is, is just, you know, something I cannot uh, personally uh, stand. Let me challenge you a little bit. Actually, Biden started turning on Israel before that Michigan vote. And I would also argue that some of those hundred thousands that didn't vote for him were actually um, blue collar automobile workers who are unhappy with this whole EV thing. But all that said, you also said a couple other things, for instance. Why this obsessive focus on Israel? Look at Haiti. You now have 11 million people on the run, starving to death. And we hear almost nothing about it. In fact, what we hear from the State Department is we're really not going to put anything in place to even get Americans out. You made that contrast. I hadn't thought about that. You made that contrast. Why? What was your point? Well, the, the point was... So much focus on Israel and Gaza involving two million people, in which most people see Israel as trying to avoid any civilian casualties. And here, right within our own hemisphere, is 11 million people who suddenly are living under gang rules, right? Now, this is going to create a massive problem with immigration if if nothing's done. And in the past, with our American leadership, we would have put together a group of countries and we'd say, look, we can't allow 11 million people in our hemisphere have to have gang rule, complete deterioration and anarchy. And, and there's no concern whatsoever for those, for those people. So there's something out of sorts here with, with what's going on and, and in, terms of, in terms of why are we only focused over there and we, and we just pay no attention to what happens to 11 million people. I thought, as you said, I, I, I don't think anybody else really made that connection. No, nobody did. It's a very important point. And why do you think, and one, another point you raised, is this whole moral equivalency issue. They're using Hamas statistics. We now know that they're complete lies. Well, he's had a hunch, but now a top statistician in America at Wharton School and University of Pennsylvania wrote a piece and in my word, he said, this is crap. And I'll give you five reasons right off the top why it's crap. And he, he lays and they still use the numbers. They act like he never wrote the piece and never analyzed that information. What's that about? No, and, and I did a poll, and they have convinced the majority of people 
that those are accurate numbers. Why would we ever believe in, in, in Hamas-generated numbers when we've seen the instances for either a terrorist group, be they diverted 25, I think as much as $25 billion of aid into building a war machine, uh, and their only goal is to, is to wipe Israel off the face of the earth, right? And so I, I wanted to tell you one, one thing, if I just have 30 seconds. Yeah, of course. I, I went back to, F, you, know, you know, another thing in the, in the piece I point out is Pearl Harbor killed 68 U.S. civilians. Now, it killed about two to 3,000 military, but it was a million, but 68 civilians, but even two to 3,000. That this is on the same scale, what, what happened on October 7th, is on, a, is on a bigger scale, 1,200 people out of in 9 million, all civilians. And what did FDR say? FDR said no matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. I believe that I interpret the will of the Congress and of the people when I assert that we will not only defend ourselves to the utmost, but will make it very certain that this form of treachery shall never again endanger us. Why should Israel take any other position than FDR did after Pearl Harbor? And why would we not completely support that position? It is shocking to me. In fact, it is infuriating to me. And FDR didn't actually fund the Japanese, did he? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, why is, so why is Joe Biden funding Iran? Again, American policy here in the region, to me, has, has gotten way off track. That's not even good politics. It doesn't make any sense what happened. You know, I, I, what, I tend to think, Mark, honestly, just man to man, I tend to think he's surrounded with these ideologues, guys like uh, uh, Blinken, and he had this guy Mali before. They come out of the Obama administration. They also come out of the Ivy League schools. They've talked about how they believe they need to rejigger the Middle East, create a balance of power between Iran and Israel. They've talked about it. It's been written about. And so they're not doing anything, anything to stop Iran from getting an atomic bomb. And they're putting their foot on Israel's throat, even if it wants to destroy Hamas. This is driven by politics, maybe with Biden, but a lot of people around them. It's driven by ideology. Now, this is a problem. When you have politics that go down to the sewer level, when you have ideologues who believe these things, and when you have a growing part in the Democrat Party who literally represents Hamas, whether it's Talib or AOC or these, oh, it's only a minority of the party. It shouldn't be any of the party. Are you concerned about what's happening to the Democrat Party? I am, con I am incredibly concerned. Look, I have, I have analyzed this. And, you know, it's mostly really by generation and age that it, it, it happens. You mean old men who are 81 young... years old? Schumer, 75 90. years old? Anyway, go ahead. Yes, but if you look at America, if you look at America on this poll, I have a simple question in my polls. Are you, are you more supportive of Israel or Hamas? Now, right. you know, it, it runs about 82, 18, something like that. But it runs, has run close to 50-50 with people 18 to 24. Frightening. And so we have a generational problem in this country where, where the generation coming up didn't experience 9-11, didn't experience so many of the events that occurred. I mean, look at what's happening in Moscow today. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. And they don't so understand happened? the danger to the world. Just so everybody knows, over 40 were murdered. Over 100 were wounded, a terrorist attack in Crocus City Hall in Moscow. Do they know who did it yet, Mark? Islamic State has taken credit ah, for it. I see. And Mr. Putin has done his best to embrace Hamas and Hezbollah in Iran, hasn't he? He has. Uh-huh. So, While he slaughtered the Chechnyans, by the way. Just like Chi slaughtering the Uyghurs. He's put two and a half million of them in concentration camps, and then he's, he entertains Hamas and so forth and so on. See, it's my view that the Marxists and the fascists and the Islamists have a lot in common. What do you think? Uh, 
it, 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 look, this, this whole theory of intersectionality, I mm-hmm. have no idea why the American left has gotten in bed with people who are antithetical to anything that they believe anyway. It, 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 it makes no sense, and, and it has left a lot of people confused how, you know, how this occurred and, and, and what it means. Mm-hmm. You do a great job, and I'll tell you why. You worked for Clinton, you're a Democrat, but when you analyze things and you do your polls, you shoot straight down the middle. That is, you're a professional. And honestly, that's the way it used to be. That's the way it used to be with journalists, most of whom were Democrats, but they try to conceal it. By being professionals, that's completely out of the door, out of the window right now. So you're a very rare gem. And I should know I'm a gem collector. So uh, I want to congratulate you. And that piece that you wrote was fantastic. I read it on the air. And, uh, and God bless you, my friend. Thank you very much. And I try to ask all the questions. Democrats will like some of them. Republicans will like some of them, mm-hmm. but you can really see opinion. Look at look at the, the HarvardHarrisPolls.com. Read our polls. They're available to the public. I post everything. Oh, I meant to ask you one other thing. Which party is more supportive of Israel? Interestingly, it, it is now more Republicans are more supportive of Israel than Democrats, which is fascinating, mm-hmm. because when I grew up, it was the opposite. Mm-hmm. World's changing right under our feet. All right, my friend, Mark Penn, God bless you, and thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, be well. He's a very good man, very kind man, too, by the way. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. My fellow Americans, we're living in very perilous economic times. Washington seems determined to bankrupt our nation with endless stimulus spending. As they devalue our dollar, hardworking Americans like you could lose everything. That's why I urge you strongly, register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. They'll teach you how to help guard your wealth using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and Silver can offer a defense against the dollar's devaluation, and the experts at Advantage Gold will explain how you can convert some of your savings into precious metals that can protect and potentially grow your wealth. With currency debasement from Washington and global uncertainty on the rise, gold and silver diversification can offer you some stability. Call 800-900-8000 right now to sign up. 800-900-8000 now. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. On that story, or the attack that uh, Mark Penn mentioned, ABC News, at least 40 people were killed and over 100 others were injured in a shooting and explosion of Moscow's Krakus City Hall, one of the biggest shopping and entertainment complexes in Russia. This evening, according to the Russian Foreign Security Service, Russia's foreign ministry called the shooting and explosion a terrorist attack. Meanwhile, it's backing Hamas and Iran against Israel. More than 70 ambulance teams were sent to the site of the attack, according to Moscow region governor, to firefighting and so forth. Most of the buildings, or the building engulfed in fire, I mean, they really blew this place to shreds. The roof partially collapsed. Several gunmen burst into the concert hall, opened fire with automatic weapons. Attackers then threw a grenade or incendiary bomb, starting a fire in the hall. In Padisk, near Moscow, public events were canceled due to the incident at the Krakow City Hall. The head of the district said the mayor of Moscow also canceled all events. <clears throat> the Kremlin said uh, Putin was informed of the attack when the shooting started and has been receiving constant updates. An advisor to Ukraine, President Zelensky, denied any Ukrainian involvement in the attack. The White House is aware of the incident. The images are just horrible said Kirby. Just hard to watch and our thoughts obviously are going to be with the victims of this terrible terrible shooting and I'm sure they're going to do that for about a week and I fully expect our White House to say whoever did this however should not be utterly destroyed. We need some moral equivalency here. 
U.S. Embassy in Moscow has issued a warning. Uh, It did on March 7th, advising U.S. citizens to avoid large gatherings for 48 hours, saying extremists have imminent plans to target large-scale gatherings in Moscow. You see what happened is, well, you saw what just happened to Moscow, or we just explained it. Now, our border is wide open, so what are we doing about this? Nothing. So we give our, we're sorry this happened. The images are horrible. You're going to secure our border? No. No, we're not going to secure the border. We're not going to secure the border. We need to do a little digging, Mr. Producer, while I'm on the air here. Uh, you heard what Mark Penn said. It was an Islamist group. Let's dig into that and see to the extent that we can find out exactly who it was. And I'll do it during the break as well. Um, you know, I don't know what it's going to take. I really don't. We have surveys done by Arab organizations that are pro-Hamas, pro-Palestinian. We have Palestinian organization that did a survey that's pro-Palestinian. You've got extraordinary numbers, 87% of Palestinians in Judea and Samaria, as well as in the Palestinian territory, as well as in Gaza, support Hamas and what Hamas did on October 7th, that we keep talking about the peaceful Palestinians. Maybe there are peaceful Palestinians, but they're outnumbered 10 to 1. There are no peaceful Palestinian leaders. None. None in the Middle East. Zero. There's nobody to talk to. You want to know why? Because they'll be killed in two seconds. There's a whole culture of hate towards the United States, towards Israel, and especially towards Jews. And then Netanyahu's under pressure by the Democrat Party in this country, by their media in this country, by hateful SOBs like Joe Scarborough, like Jake Tapper, and the rest of the crowd, trashing Netanyahu, who really is the only world leader standing between the... Terrorists in us. Putin's playing footsies with the terrorists. Now they got hit. Biden's playing footsie with the terrorists. We're going to get hit. The only country taking this seriously, the only world leader taking this seriously, Israel and Netanyahu. They're fighting them. They're fighting them. And we're funding them. We are literally funding them. And this piece of crap, Schumer goes to the Senate floor, starts attacking their electoral process in Israel. He's giving aid and comfort to terrorists. Biden, slow walking ammunition. So the Israeli people have difficulty defending themselves. Well, he sends a hundred billion dollars to Iran. I am sick of these liberals, these frauds, these Marxists in our country, sitting on panels on TV, sitting on panels, telling us about Netanyahu, telling us about the Israelis, telling us, oh, look at all the citizens they've killed, using Hamas numbers, using the Nazis' numbers. That's why these bastards need to be thrown out of office. They're going to get everybody killed. Everybody. Everybody. They are insane. They're sabotaging our own country. Do I owe you anything, Mr. Producer? Ladies and gentlemen, the foot's on the pedal. This is Friday. A lot of people throw their foot on the desk. Not me. Let's go. We'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Sirhan Sirhan assassinated 
Senator Robert Kennedy, who was the likely Democrat nominee and may well have become president, at the Chorum Hotel, as I recall, maybe it was the ambassador, but anyway, it was in L.A. He just won the California Democratic primary. Sirhan was a Jordanian-Palestinian. And after his arrest, I quote, he was asked, why did you assassinate Robert Kennedy? He said, I can explain it. I did it for my country. He believed that he was deliberately betrayed by Kennedy's support for Israel in the June 1967 Six-Day War. And on the one-year anniversary of that war, he assassinated Kennedy. He had been radicalized in the Palestinian culture way back then, more than half a century ago. He had been radicalized. And <clears throat> the mentality of the terrorists in the Middle East, whether it's ISIS or Hamas, whether it's Palestinians or whatever it is, exists. And to pretend it doesn't exist by having passive policies, a wide open border, by undermining the one country on the face of the earth that is fighting these terrorist bastards and winning, is unconscionable. Even worse, as I said to Mark Penn, did FDR fund the Japanese? No. And we're funding Iran. <laughs> You know, it's too bad I have to keep saying history will judge this. Because we can judge it right now, the insanity of it. Now, here's the latest news. It is ISIS. They're not only taking credit for it. Our intelligence services said they did it. It was at a concert. Isn't that interesting? It was at a concert. Moscow concert attack. 40 dead in armed attack. ISIS claims responsibility. What we know about the concert attack, many camouflage broke into a Moscow concert hall, opened fire, shooting an unknown number of people, Russia's prosecutor general said. The terror group ISIS has claimed responsibility but did not provide proof of the claim, and now the United States literally 10 or 11 minutes ago said it was ISIS which was made on ISIS-affiliated news agency Amak on Telegram. Russian officials said more than 40 people are dead, and I'm sure the number is going to go up, and more than 100 injured after the attack at the Krakas City Hall. A fire also started inside the hall, a large concert venue northwest of central Moscow. Looks like they learned something from the Hamas Palestinian terrorists. Firefighters have evacuated about 100 people from the basement of the building. Efforts are underway to rescue people from the roof. Place is burning to a crisp. Popular rock band was scheduled to play what appeared to be a sold-out show at the venue, which has a maximum capacity of more than 9,000 people. <clears throat> I think we're going to see a string of this stuff now. And I'm going to tell you why. Not only because these terrorist bastards never stop. But I'm going to be honest with you. They see the reaction of the Biden administration and the Democrat Party. They see Schumer. They see Sanders. They see Talib. They see the river in the street crowd. They see the massive anti-Semitism in our own country by the Marxists and the Islamists who also hate our own country. It's no accident that Vladimir Putin has been embracing Hamas and Iran and the PLO and the terrorists as recently, I think, as this week. That he cast a vote at the UN where he wouldn't even cast a vote condemning Hamas. He was joined there by Communist China. This, I believe, was yesterday. Europe. Europe, which has all gotten together in a coalition at the direction of Blinken and our State Department to condemn Israel? To try and create moral equivalencies with Israel? And the terrorists? Europe's going to get hit. I'm the only one with the guts 
to get behind this microphone in front of a camera and to tell you the truth, which is we're facing the second Muslim crusade. Not by all Muslims, obviously. But it's interesting. There are several billion Muslims in this world. Let's pretend there's one billion. So if one-tenth of one percent of one billion, Mr. Producer, are committed to terrorism, that's a lot of people. That's a whole lot of people. But it's not one-tenth of one percent. There have been surveys done where a significant percentage have been so radicalized that they flat out support terrorism. Now, what are we supposed to do? Pretend that's not true? It is true. Again, it has nothing to do with all the Muslim people. It has to do with Hamas and ISIS and so forth and so on. Our country won't even allow Israel to destroy Hamas. Our country, by that I should be more specific, Biden and the Democrat and his regime and his surrogates and his supporters literally want to carve out a brand new country for Palestinian terrorists in the Middle East like there's not enough. Take it like taking the right kidney out of the state of Israel. They see all this. You know what they see? An opportunity. Now let's see how Putin responds. 9,000 people at a concert in Israel. A few thousand kids at a concert. Let's see. Now, if Israel, if Netanyahu was anything like Putin, and he's nothing like Putin, nothing, despite what that sleazeball Marxist bastard Bernie Sanders has to say, and his cheerleader, Thomas Friedman, another unconscionable, immoral puke, and his ilk. If Netanyahu were anything like Putin, he'd put out a statement tonight, and he'd be saying, we understand you need to defend yourselves, and we certainly support that. But we expect you to abide by the rules of law, the war, the laws of war. We expect your response to be, what was it that they used? Proportionate. That's right. Good, Mr. Producer. Proportionate. We expect a proportionate response. A life is a life. That would be the statement. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm waiting for that statement right now from Joe Biden and Kirby and Blinken, and I haven't heard it. Lecturing Putin and the Russians to be proportionate. That we expect them to be proportionate. I mean, after all, we're all part of a civilized society, are we not? Let me be as clear as I know how. The Biden, Blinken, Sullivan, Schumer, Sanders, Talib, New York Times, CNN, MSNBC, Washington Post response to what Israel is doing is perverse. Is perverse. Never before when a country's been attacked like this has been told to control itself or to be proportionate or to enter into a ceasefire when its, when its armed forces are actually, after slugging it out street by street, building by building, are actually winning and they have the final entrails of Hamas surrounded. Never before has an ally been treated like this by the United States where we're cutting off arms and cutting off support. We're going to the United Nations to denounce them. Where we're investigating them for war crimes, not the terrorists. ISIS sees this. All the terrorists see this, including the domestic would-be terrorists. Hamas front groups care. They see this. They've helped created this. 
and the Marxists in our colleges and universities. They all see it. Unfortunately, there's a significant number of Democrats in the Democrat Party who are so committed to the Democrat Party, they don't much give a damn. I met them last Sunday. They get up and walk out when you tell them the truth. They don't want to know the truth. They're Democrats. Democrat first. American second. So let's hope Mr. Putin is proportional. Let's hope our administration goes to the UN and insists that Russia is proportional. Let's see if he organizes Europe and the Arab countries, his fellow Democrats in the Senate and the House, his boys and girls, his buddies in the American media, to put pressure on Putin to be proportionate. Let's see. We'll be watching. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that. Free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Welcome back, America. We have our buddy Jesse Waters with us, and uh, you know him from Fox. But he's actually quite a great author, and he's got a great book out there, Get It Together, Troubling Tales from the Liberal Fringe, where he goes through multiple cases of people who were interviewed about the problems they have, serious problems that they have, mostly related to their families, and then how they project that onto society and screw up our damn country. Is that about right, Jesse Waters? That's right. I like the passion, Mark. Well, it's called Get It Together, Troubling Tales from the Liberal Fringe. You can get it at Amazon.com, any major bookstore. We're going to now plop it on all of our social sites. Get It Together. Jesse Waters, this really is a great book. I was privileged to be your first interview. And let me just start this way. You know, people think, well, another book. It's not another book. What it is is really it is a book of essays on these different people. And then you have sort of a common thread that they have these issues with their parents, or they have these issues, they have these issues, and then they blame society and project it onto society, correct? That's right. It's kind of like an anthropological study. I went mm-hmm. out and talked to these freaks in the wild, also a little psychological <laughs> investigation. And so about two dozen of these fringe activists, people that want to empty the prisons, legalize drugs, open the borders, and do drag queen performances in front of kids. Excuse me, you have a problem with this? Hours. <laughs> yeah, right. So they don't have a problem with any of this. And they say this is normal behavior because society has stopped stigmatizing. Now, you and I grew up, Mark, when there was a stigma to drug abuse, when there was a stigma to committing crimes, we're not allowed to judge anybody anymore. So these radical people have been emboldened, and they feel they can do whatever they want. And if society tells them to knock it off or get it together, they feel like we're oppressing them, and they feel like they're the victims. So now they're just lashing out and they say we're not the problem society's the problem and that's where we are today and just to be honest most of them make up part of the base of the democrat party they welcome miscreants and malcontents into their party they exploit people who do not really fit into society i don't mean people who aren't independent that kind of i'm talking about people who cannot play within the box they seem to uh to to work their way to the Democrat Party and vice versa. Give us a couple of 
of key examples of some of these people you interviewed? Well, that's a great point. Not only do they exploit these people, the Democratic policy is to create chaos in the family and mm-hmm. create the dysfunction in the family that produces these radical people. So now we have, and for instance, I interviewed one of these anti-work activists. And this is a woman who believes that every holiday she should be allowed off. Not only her holidays, but other people's religious holidays. She believes there should be a four-day work week. She believes that everybody should be able to work from home. And that she should have four weeks, or excuse me, eight weeks paid vacation. And maternity for a year, paternity leave for a year. So these are the kind of people you're dealing with. And then you realize after you learn about how they were raised, both of sets of her parents went bankrupt. Mm. Both sets of her parents won the lottery and then squandered it. Really? And their families riddled with drug abuse. So you're dealing with people that have fractured family lives financially, sexually, um, just disturbed And now they've come of age and they're projecting these problems onto the rest of us. And it's making us all nuts, but we're all afraid to tell everybody to get it together. Mm -hmm. Give us a, there's so many great examples in your book. Let me, let me ask you this. Was there any one person in particular who stood out as um, a particular kook? God, where do I got a lot of them there? I know it's tough. I mean, we we interviewed, we interviewed (laughs) Stalinists. Uh, We interviewed anti-natalists. These are people that don't believe we should bring children into the world, and eventually the human race should just die off because that's not depressing at all. We interviewed someone who was a traffic-blocking climate activist. You've seen these people. They sit in the middle of the freeway. So you're trying to get to work. Maybe your wife's in labor, and they're just squatting on the cement so you can't go by because they think Mm -hmm. they need to raise awareness because the world's about to end. They just piss people, people off. I mean, they just piss I said, excuse me, did anybody get out of the vehicle and say, thank you, you've now changed my <laughs> mind on the climate? He said, no, not a single yeah, exactly. person. In fact, Jesse so Waters, I suspect, we, yeah. I suspect somebody had a different thought, like, should I hit the gas pedal? Anyway, what go right ahead. I'm they sorry. They run you over. Yes. In Philly, you don't do that. You only Wait do a minute. DC. Wait a minute. People don't know we're both from Philly. Both we of are, us. and that's 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 what makes us so great. I think so. We're both Philly, and we're and we're fanatics in our own special yes, way. We, we interviewed someone who has an emotional support squirrel. She took the squirrel <laughs> on an airplane, Mark, and yes. was removed physically by U.S. marshals and then arrested, and couldn't figure out why. She mm. thought it was completely normal, and this is what happens when everybody stays inside their house. They think they're the king. They order all the food delivery, all the goods and services delivered. They never leave. Everything is related on a screen. So when they do leave the house, they're antisocial animals. And they don't know how to behave themselves. So when society tells them to get it together and and knock it off, they feel like we're the bad guys. So they need to have emotional support allowances for alligators crocodiles squirrels we need to accommodate them Mm -hmm. jesse's gonna hold over he does have a tv show to do you may have heard of it but i want to tell you that the concept for this book and the execution of this book is like nothing i've ever seen or read i'm being i'm I'm being 100 percent honest it really is a fascinating book ladies and gentlemen get your copy get it together jesse waters amazon.com any major bookstore any online bookstore. We'll be right back. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that, free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility 
for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. We're here with Jesse Waters. This is a blockbuster book I predicted to be number one on the New York Times bestseller list, and people need to understand how difficult that is. Because the New York Times doesn't want Jesse Waters, number one on the bestseller list, any more than they ever want me. So you have to sort of overwhelm them with sales. But this is a book I know you're going to really enjoy. And I know it's a book you're going to pass to somebody else. It's Get It Together, Troubling Tales from the Liberal Fringe, Jesse Waters. Get it together. You can get it on Amazon.com, any of my social sites, any major bookstore. Uh, Have you been asked, Jesse Waters, to appear on any of the Sunday shows? Have you been asked to be interviewed by the New York Times? Have you been asked by any of the usual media outlets other than conservatives to talk about your book? Uh, No, not at all. And you're right about Mm -hmm. the Times. You have to win it so big they can't rig. It's sort of like a Trump election, right? You got you got to like have enough. Yeah, exactly. You, you got to have at least 5% in there for fraud. Um, <laughs> at least. Now, when you were going through this book, you're going through all these miscreants and malcontents, but you're doing it very, very intelligently. By the way, he's not there. The book is not about exploiting people, America. It's about showing you examples of what happens to these people in their own lives and their effect on the country in the aggregate, because there's so many of these people. Did you find yourself getting depressed? Did you say, I got to tell the people what's going on? What went through your mind as you were pulling these together? I was shocked by the kind of casual dysfunction of these people. I mean, we interviewed an ecosexual influencer. And for those of you who don't know, those are the people that get aroused uh, sexually oh, by engaging in Mother Earth. I said, well, does that make you a lesbian since you're in a relationship with Mother Earth? And she ah. said, I don't see Mother Earth as mother. I see Mother Earth as a lover. Oh. So this is a woman who, you know, rubs a she rose been in an earthquake? and pricks herself. <laughs> yeah. Just curious. Have you been in a hurricane, them. a tidal wave? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, Mark, you're bad. She's on tonight on Jesse Waters Primetime. She Ah. actually came back and talked to us and explained what this actually is. But, I mean, uh, we interviewed a professional cuddler. This is someone Mm -hmm. who you think is probably an escort, but no. People will pay $80 an hour to go into a room with a complete stranger and lay on their lap, stroke their hair. Oh, that's gross. Cry. Yeah, it's, it's totally bizarre. And I don't know if it's a post-COVID or a Me Too thing, but you have to explore these things, Mark, because the, the radical right. left starts these revolutions decades earlier than anybody realized. Because all of a sudden you wake up one day and they're transitioning kindergartners and you're thinking, well, when did that start? So you got to get out in front of these things. We interviewed a, a vegan extremist who said, I said, well, what if I have a hamburger? Is, is that a homicide? And she said, yes. And I said, well, Mm. if you were the president, would you arrest me for having a burger? And she said, in an ideal world, I'd lock you up. Nah. What do they eat, by the way? What do vegans eat? I don't even know. Cardboard? What do they eat? Does anybody know? Beans. Beans. A lot of beans, a lot of lettuce, a lot of chickpeas. Ah, I'd starve to death. Anyway. You uh, You and me both. Let me ask you this. You're there in the five. You guys talk about your books, I'm sure, and so forth and so on. Who on the five has been most supportive? I don't mean in promoting your book and in saying I've read the book and I really like it. Dana seems to read all the books, doesn't she? Dana can read. I've never seen anybody. She can go through three books a weekend. It's because she doesn't really drink or she gets to, she gets to bed at nine and wakes up at five. But she's been very supportive. Uh, Greg, uh, to his credit, has been very supportive, very cynical, but supportive. How about Jessica like Tarloff? Wrote it. Not as supportive as you'd think, but um, she's been busy this week. And uh, yes, I'd she's, say she's she's nice. I know you and Jessica have your beef, but she's no, we don't. I've never <laughs> spoken to her in my life. You just text me about her during the five. Uh, listen, said, I've spoke. Tarloff. I have listen. I have <laughs> dealt with people like Jessica Tarloff my entire life. I can tell you what they're going to say. Ten minutes before they say it. 
It has nothing to do with it. It's not, <laughs> well, tell it's, me it's, so it's, I can get ahead well, of it. Does your knee ever jerk? It's pretty much that. <laughs> but and, and it has nothing to do with her. I mean, it could be anybody. But uh, that's that's basically the mentality. All right, folks, he has to go to his TV show. I encourage you to watch that at 8 p.m. Eastern time. But really, the book, you're going to love this book. I'm telling you now. It's Jesse Waters' book, Get It Together, Troubling Tales from the Liberal Fringe. Get It Together. It's not some... You know, nothing but it's a very fascinating subject of book. You can get it at Amazon.com, any bookstore, any online store, most of all on all my social sites. God bless you and continued good luck with this book. Thank you and God bless you and thanks for all your insight, your analysis, your intelligence and all your support. Everybody loves you, Mark. They do? Why am I wearing a bulletproof vest? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, most brother. Of us. Yeah, well, Thank God you. bless you. You're a good man. Same here. He's a great guy. And let me tell you something. Very smart. Self-deprecating. A lot of fun. But also very serious about this country. Very serious about this country. I encourage you to get the book. Get it together. Just go to Amazon.com right now if you want. You can have it by tomorrow. And uh, again, I encourage you to do it. And if you're going to get the book, today's the day. Tomorrow's the day to get it. Actually, it's today. Um... Uh, you should be able to help him out with the New York Times list that way. I'm quite serious about it. If you wait a week or two weeks or something, it's not going to help him. So if you're interested in the book, tonight's the night. Just go on Amazon. We link to it on my social sites and grab it. That's what I would do. And you'll have it and you're going to like it. I mean, it's intriguing. One chapter to the next. They're not all the same. These personalities just scratch your head. I read the book. And uh, it's hard to put down. And you'll find yourself laughing and you'll find yourself choking at the same time. You will. Get it together. Jesse Waters, Amazon.com. I encourage you to grab your copy. All right, Mr. Producer, I'm here. Put your whip down. Well, that's not what I meant. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that. Free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick-charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Let's start off, not to depress you folks. Let me tell you what I have here, because I'm not going to do this. We have Anthony Blinken. We have little Dick Durbin of the great state of Illinois. Eddie Glauday Jr. Who the hell is that? Who the hell is this guy? Of course, we have the morning schmo who unfortunately, with each passing day, loses an IQ point. Uh, we have a few other reprobates. All of them saying the same thing. As if they're reading from their own manifesto. As if they send these talking points from Joe Biden to all of his miscreants and malcontents in the media. And they say the same damn thing. Netanyahu is the problem because they're anti-Semites. Because they're Marxists in their, in their attitudes and in their strategies. When you're attacking the elected prime minister of Israel, the commander in chief, and you attack him over and over again and over and over again and try and separate him from his country, when his country supports all of his policies, they're united around his policies. You're not attacking Netanyahu, you're attacking the Israelis. You pretend otherwise. I'm not going to allow it. I'm not going to allow you to use your sleazeball tactics. Scarborough 
has attacked and continues to attack Netanyahu because when he does that, Biden throws him a dog biscuit. And there's Joe, Bar- Joe Scarborough. The White House can rely on him to chase the dog biscuit, and he's chasing it all the time. He's not the only one. He throws a dog biscuit. There's little Dick Durbin sniffing around for his biscuit. Chuck Schumer. Now, Chuck Schumer likes multiple dog biscuits because he's a slob. But nonetheless, he gets his dog biscuits, too. This is how the Democrat Party operates. This is how the Democrat Party operates. Let me ask you folks who are Democrats, first of all, not Democrats, but those of you who are Democrats are having second thoughts about this. Do you really want to be part of an organization that has Rashida Tlaib in it? Do you really want to be part of an organization that has Bernie Sanders in it? People who hate our country, hate you? Do you really want to be part of an organization that opens its arm wide to Islamists? who are demanding not just the obliteration of Israel, but the evisceration of the Jewish people. Is this the party you want to be part of? I would ask everybody, do you want to be part of a party that fought for slavery, literally fought for slavery and segregation, that supported eugenics against black people? But Mark, they I I don't care what they say. Because that's what you are. You're part of that party. The Republican Party doesn't have anything like this in its past. Nothing. Except weaklings and quizlings, I'll admit that. We'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from from the underground command post... Deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. The final hour of the week. Really, the beginning of the weekend, we kind of cross both, both hemispheres, may I say. Hope you're doing well. Our number is 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. I've written to myself here, save time for callers. Just had to make sure I read my note. Justice Breyer will be on Meet the Depressed this Sunday, and they're putting out some of this in advance because they want to try and draw your interest in listening to him. Does anybody know who the host on Meet the Depressed is without looking it up? I, I didn't, and yet I quote her all the time, Mr. Producer. Her name is Kristen Welker. Unknown. Before that, remember the guy who was in charge, Mr. Producer? The schmuckster, Chuck Todd. Remember the guy before that, Tim Russert. And the guy before that who was there forever, Joel uh, 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 Spivak. His name was Spivak. In his day, Spivak was famous, not because he was a drama queen, not because he was a gotcha guy. He was a very tough, straight-talking, plain-talking journalist. Tim Russert had been an active Democrat for Moynihan, and before that, uh, for another senator, But he was not a radical leftist, and he took his responsibility seriously. Like I was talking about Mark Penn in the first hour. They're Democrats, but they're real journalists. And so they try. They may not be able to perfect it, but they try to be journalists. That's out the window today. That's not how it works. And that's part and part why I want to play this. Chuck Todd destroyed Meet the Press, and Kristen Welker is destroying it further. George Stephanopoulos has destroyed the ABC newsroom. Jake Tapper, among others, has destroyed CNN as a straight news cable channel. That's how it was started. Now nobody looks at it that way, even in the least. Nobody knows why MSNBC is in business. It has no purpose. It has no purpose. What's it doing over there? So they bring in former Justice Breyer. And he's interviewed for a couple of minutes 
a little longer than that. But so they put out some clips because they want you to be impressed with the interview. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be impressed with interviews, I've got Saturday and Sunday for you on Life, Liberty and Levin. 8 p.m. Eastern, both shows. I still want to encourage you to go ahead and lock it in in your DVR. Because you can't be sure if you're going to be home to watch it. And I don't want you to miss it. I do it for you. Because if, if I don't have an audience, I'm not going to do it. If I don't have an audience, I'm not going to do it. But I do. We're number one Saturday nights and we're number one Sunday nights. In fact, on Sunday, sometimes we're number one through the whole day. It's because of you. And we're going to have tomorrow night on Life, Liberty, and Levin, Leo Terrell and John Radcliffe, and it's killer. In my monologue, I like to call an opening statement, will be remembered for a very, very long time. No brag, just fact. And Sunday, we have Alan West, fantastic man, and David Schoen, one of the great lawyers. So that's four great guests and two shows. Now notice what I don't do. I don't have a conga line of guests. I see these shows, I'm not talking about Fox, but I see these shows where a host will have three guests on at the same time, Mr. Medusa. What is the point of that? Is there a point? I can't think of one. So that's really four people talking in a segment. That's fine. Some people must like it. Maybe it works. I can't. I can't watch it, let alone do it. And this is all that CNN and MSNBC ever do. Flood the zone with morons, miscreants, malcontents, reprobates, and worse. I have a one-on-one discussion. If the guest has something to say, I shut my mouth and I let them speak. If I have a question, I wait for them to finish. That's the way I was raised. Plus, it's much easier to listen to an interview that way. Well, apparently it works or you wouldn't be listening. So I hope you will check in. Uh, and I'll tell you what doesn't work. This. Here is former Justice Breyer with Kristen Welker. This will be on the Sunday Meet the Depress show. So I'm giving you a heads up so you don't watch it. Cut 16, go. How disruptive was the leak to the court and to the relationships that you describe? It was unfortunate. Bleeding. Were you angry? You try to avoid getting angry where that effect. You try in, in a job. Is it a, you, you try to remain as. First calm. of all, I'm already spellbound, aren't you, Mr. Producer? This is really riveting. You're learning so much. The questions are absolutely brilliant. Were you angry? I try never to be angry. That's why I talk like this. I always want to be reasonable and serious. It was very unfortunate what took place. Boy, that's compelling TV. You learn a whole lot, too. Go ahead. And serious as possible. Mm -hmm. I think it was unfortunate. How much discussion was there about a potential compromise around 15 weeks? You know as much about that as I do. Uh, you you, you saw know. what uh, Chief Justice Roberts wrote. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. when you see uh, what uh, is written, the normal situation is before something is written in the conference, people in some form or other uh, will discuss what they're thinking of writing. Not always mm-hmm. and, and not uh, identical, but there's usually some. So what did you learn from that, folks? Nothing. Okay, now we're like 45 seconds in. And this has to be the best of it. Otherwise, the Meet the Depressed crowd over there at NBC would not have released it. It's like, gee, I got to listen to this interview. Right, Mr. Bidus? I got I to gotta hear more of this. I'm learning so much. The leak was unfortunate. Oh, my God. Did you hear him? It was unfortunate. And usually we we talk to each other before we write our opinions to try and, you know, meet halfway. Wow. Ooh, doggy. It's going to be a hot one Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead. Do you think that a compromise was possible before the leak around 15 weeks? 
I usually hope for compromise. That's <laughs> He's not going to answer. By the way, nor should he. I don't even know what the hell he's doing there. I don't even know why he accepted it. But there he is. I always hope for compromise. Go ahead. Hopeful there could be a compromise. Oh, you want to put words in my mouth. (laughs) I'm careful what I say on this. Because I say our interests are different. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make news. I've written what I thought. Mm -hmm. If you think there's news in here or in the dissent... Go right ahead. Well, but, no, I don't uh, think. I, I actually don't think there's news. I actually don't think there's anything. You were a hell of a booking. You must have been tough to get, Justice. Uh, just, yes, uh, I know this. Can you imagine the conference room with these these people? Oh my God! They sit there for forty years, thirty years. Go ahead. Something in addition. Yeah. Like just to just to be clear, though, d- did you think a compromise was possible? Oh, he's going to hit her over the head with a uh, copy of the Constitution. Something's coming. Go ahead. I always think it's possible. Mm-hmm. I always I always think it's possible. Usually up until the last minute. Mr. Producer. If this happened to me and I'm interviewing and we're taping it, I would have turned to. TV, Mr. Producer, and I would have said. Uh, what a flop. What a flop. Cut 17, go. Do you worry that too many people have lost the ability to listen in this country? Yes. And where does that leave us? By the way, yeah. did you notice he didn't let her finish? <laughs> he didn't even listen to the question. And how is that? Bad. Yeah, I, I think there's truth to that. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. By the way, what kind of questions are these? Why do we even care what he thinks? Too many people listen, they don't listen. Sometimes they listen, they shouldn't listen, they should. Okay, um, where are we going with this? Where are we going with this? Why did she invite him and why did he accept? It's perplexing. But if it's Sunday, it's meet the depressed. And he sounds depressed, doesn't he, Rich? Oh, my God. Yes, he always talks like this. I could see at the other end of the conference tape on the Supreme Court, somebody yelling, Hey, do you mind speaking up down there? Anyway, go ahead. Does that potentially mean for the state of this country's democracy? Okay, hold on. Hold hold, hold on. You think people aren't listening to... Yes. What does that mean for democracy? Well, uh, let's finish up. Go. There are two sides to, to many things. One, he said the United States of America had points to the country. This is in part the United States of America. So the United States of America, we used to think, and I still think, that maybe we're not listening as much as we should. And tell me, who should we listen to? Now we'll get deep. To whom shall we listen, to put it properly? The corrupt media? Is that to whom we should listen? Yes, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I I always think of the sage words of Joe Scarborough, Jim Acosta, Andrea Andrea Mitchell, and we can... uh, These people, we should be listening to them. How about the tenured Marxist Islamist professors? Should we be listening to them as well? How about Schumer's self-hating, Israel-hating, Jew-hating speech on the floor of the city? Should we listen to that as well? To whom shall we listen? I'm just curious, because we don't listen enough. And that's why our democracy's dying. That's not why our democracy's dying. Because your party, Mr. Breyer is actively, strategically, and intentionally destroying our country. That's why. And some of us have to speak out and not be passive and not not sit back and watch it. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, my beautiful daughter, our beautiful daughter, Lauren, turns 36 today. I can remember the day she was born. She's the oldest of the kids. She's a wonderful husband, two beautiful children, our grandchildren, Sloan, the eldest, beautiful little girl, and Asher, beautiful little boy. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, she can't hear me right now. She's in another location. Uh, how much we love her and appreciate her. And, uh, you know, to have kids who are really good kids and uh, really love you and you love them back is a fantastic thing. It's a fantastic thing. And I know families have issues. Look, our families had issues. Not with our kids, but with others. Or physical issues, health issues. Every family has to go through it. It's not fun. It's difficult. Is that me, Mr. Producer? Oh, it's you. Anyway, so... Um, so it's, it, everything's not the Partridge family. But it does help when you really have a connection in the family. You have connection with your kids. And... Um, in a real soulful connection. Doesn't mean we're Pollyannas. No, that's not the way it works. But uh, we're all in a very good place. We've been in a very good place for a very long time. So there is that, Mr. Producer. Mr. Producer has two beautiful young kids, too, with his beautiful wife. I remember when Mr. Producer was single. I remember when he was single, desperate. Single, he would ask every girl, he just walked down the street, said, Hey, are you lonely? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but he's a good man. Yeah, <laughs> I won't say that. That's true. Uh, anyway, so I, I just wanted to say that to our wonderful, wonderful daughter. I want to get back to this. Breyer has written a book. Reading the Constitution, Why I Chose Pragmatism and Not Textualism. Now, this is a man who would never come on my program. And that's okay. But I've heard this a thousand times from law professors. I've read it in law review articles. You hear it in confirmation, pragmatism over textualism. So what are the limits of pragmatism? One man's pragmatism is another man's anarchy. Tyranny. What does that mean? And let's get to the basics. Let's put aside something like a governing document, the Constitution. Let's say you took out a loan for a car. Took out a mortgage. You signed the documents. When you read the document, are you being pragmatic or are you reading the text, Mr. Producer? You're reading the text. Plus, this is a false battle that he creates here. We're not really textualists. We're originalists. Now, what does that mean? I can explain it. It means you look at the text of the Constitution, but you don't always have the answer in the text of the Constitution. Societies are complicated. But you have guidance from the text of the Constitution if the text doesn't provide you with any way to discern what was meant on its face. The only legitimate way to read the Constitution is through this doctrine of originalism. Well, what did they mean? So there are steps you go through if the text itself doesn't give you the answers you want. Some people will look at the legislative history, if there is any, with the debates that took place, not as being decisive, but as helping Interpret the language in the Constitution and the intent of those who wrote it. But if you don't believe that the framers of the Constitution were virtuous, if you don't believe that you are compelled by taking your oath to interpret the Constitution, but you can be pragmatic, you can bring in other, you know, issues, other 
manuscripts, even foreign law to interpret the Constitution, then you're not really in a position that you should be. It's up to the political bodies, if they want to be pragmatic or not, it's up to you to hold the line. The Constitution is what separates us from evil. I'll be right back. Nobody says it better than Mark Levin. I'll go with what Mark Levin said, because nobody could say it better. Call in now at 877-381-3811. Let's take some calls here. Let's go to Bob, Springfield, Massachusetts, XM Satellite. Bob, how are you, sir? Hey, Mark. Uh, It's a great day to talk to the great Mark Levin. Oh, hey, a couple you. things. Uh, one, it, it's I tell you, I, I hope and pray, Mark, that you write another book. Okay, I haven't fortunately bought any of your books yet. I'm going to start with this latest one that you have now, because I've heard you, you talk about your books. But I'm oh wait, I meant fellow. to tell you something. I meant to tell you and the whole audience something. If you go on my social site now, Bob, I have a link to a page that Simon and Schuster has agreed to put up, which is very very nice of them where two chapters of the book in full are there for you to read for free, chapter two and chapter three. I called them and I said, look, these are very important times. This, these two chapters are crucial. I'd like to put them out publicly. It's what I asked them last week. They got back to me, you know, in a very good period of time. And they said, all right, Mark, for you, that's what we're going to do. So I have linked to that. It's, it's fortuitous that you called and you mentioned this. Those two chapters, the full text of those chapters, they're available to you for free. You don't have to pay a cent. And I encourage you to not only read it, but to send it to everybody on your email list and everybody you can think of, because this can have an effect on this election. If it gets into the hands of millions of people, and now it can. Anyway, Bob, go ahead. Thank you. That was a great reminder. You didn't know it, but that's what you did. No, but uh, you're awesome. I mean, your wisdom is so great. That's why I hope and pray you write another, many more books, okay? Well, I have another one in mind. Can I check it with you? I was going to call it Iacocca. What do you think? Uh, Just kidding. No, I Just don't. kidding. <laughs> hey, so anyway, yes, uh, what sir. I'm calling about is I wanted your perspective. When when America gets hit because Biden opened the borders up with 10 million mm-hmm. people, when mm-hmm. we get hit with that shooting like they did in uh, Russia and the one mm-hmm. they did in Israel, when we mm-hmm. have, let's say, 100 or 200 or 1,000 cell sites with, where, where our concerts are being shot up, where our ball games are mm-hmm. being shot up, What's going to be the response? Uh, you know, it's just going it, to. Well, let me tell you something I've been thinking about since you mentioned that. Because, you know, I want to think like uh, one of the tyrants on the left. Uh, like this, this lawfare. So Joe Biden has violated federal law when it comes to immigration. He's violated the Constitution because he refuses to, quote unquote, take care that our laws are enforced. Now, if we're hit with a terrorist attack, the question now presents itself, thanks to the Democrats and their media and their courts, if Joe Biden violated the Constitution and committed these crimes, and he knows he did, because I've been saying it on TV and radio now over and over and over again, that's been my allegation, and he did it anyway, and somebody's murdered or killed or some group of people, I would throw the federal criminal code at him. I'd find the exact right parts of the code, and if I could, I would charge him. That's a lot worse than documents, don't you think, sir? That's a lot worse than January 6th, where they don't have anything to tie Donald Trump to any violence that occurred on January 6th. So they dig up the 1871 Ku Klux Klan Act. So they have laid the predicate, they have laid the precedent, they have laid the foundation. And you ask what can be done, that is with Joe Biden, that's what I would do. I tell my attorney general, you look and you look hard. And you find if there's any basis to charge him for the dereliction that resulted in the the terrorism attack, he was warned, he was told, he would not comply with the Constitution, he would not enforce federal immigration laws, the consequences of his illegality need to be tested in a court of law. That's what I would say. And I'd cite Judge Pond in the, in the circuit. I would cite Judge uh, Chutkin 
in the D.C. Circuit. I would cite whatever the Supreme Court decides with uh, post-presidential immunity uh, if it doesn't go the right way. And I would cite, uh, of course, all the, I would personally, all the media uh, imbeciles who are out there pushing this agenda. All right, my brother, thank you for your call. Great call. I don't have any books to give you, or I would, but I do have free, two free chapters. Folks, this is really cool. Publishers don't do this. They'll let you put out maybe a paragraph or three paragraphs. But I have a great relationship with them. And they said, okay, we'll do it. One chapter, I said, I don't want one, I want two. I want chapter two and chapter three. They're connected. One flows to the next. There's, it's also on our website, marklevinshow.com, marklevinshow.com. But it's going to be up to you to go hit the link. That's all you have to do, and there it is. And then you copy the link into your browser, and you can email it to anyone and everyone. And that's what I want to encourage you to do, okay? It's free. It's not, it, there's no obligation you're helping spread the word. You're the Paul Revere's. You're the Thomas Paines. View these two chapters, chapter two and chapter three, as pamphlets. As pamphlets, like the old colonists used to use pamphlets. These are pamphlets. It's not the entire book. It's chapter two and chapter three. And as I say, send it to every single person you can think of, friend or foe alike, and urge them to read it. That's it. I don't make a penny. I don't care. Push it out. Please. Don't you agree, Mr. Producer? You've read it. Very, very important. In fact, I sent those chapters today to a few people, including uh, Tim Scott, Stephen A. Smith, a bunch of other people. Very, very good people. Very polite. And I want a whole lot more people to read it. But that's going to be up to you. You're the army of patriots. You're the Levinites. Just push it out there. I get nothing. Except we're going to build our army we're going to uh, uh, voters and it takes ideas. It takes the truth. It takes facts. And just by that act of sending an email with that link, there's no registration. There's no registration. We don't know who you are. I don't want to know who you are. I don't want your phone number. I don't want your address. I don't want your email. Just go get it. It's sitting right there. All right. We got one minute. Uh, let's try and squeeze one in real fast. Sil Morgan, the great KSLM. Uh, who is it? It's Ron. Ron, you got 45 seconds, baby. Go. I'm doing fine. Don't ask me how I'm doing. Just go. Okay. I, I, I'm going right now. Number one, we're getting ready to head into the days of the Weimar Republic collapse. This president has been roof for wrong. Why is he pushing our CIA agents like he used in January 6th in our territory when I was in D.C. January 6th and trying to do the same thing to provoke Russia into a war through using NATO apparatus and propaganda with the 45 labs that they had. But I got good news. We got rid of the dragon. Ron, week. Ron, there's a whole lot. Go- Ron, I know Ron. Hey, Ron, how are you, buddy? Pretty good, my brother. You, you, the Doc is a soul train. Okay, but the main <laughs> point is this: is that, is this, my brother, is that we are on the move in Oregon. We are on the move throughout the country. Eyes is. Gels coming off the ice. The hearts are softening, but we're going to have to hard spot because this president and knows they're wrong. The rhinos. I got to go. Don't get don't get mad at me. Don't get mad. at me. I used to watch that sort of soul train every now and then. Ron, call back. We'll be right back. Mark Levin. Again, I want to encourage you. Strongly, Saturday and Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, Life, Liberty, and Levin on Fox. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, Saturday and Sunday, brand new shows, the best format in television. If you're not sure if you're going to see it live, then right after the show, set up your DVR. That way you won't miss it. We go to America every Friday in honor of you. Here we go.
folks, please don't forget, live or set your DVR, 8 p.m. Saturday night. That's tomorrow, 8 p.m. Sunday night. That's Eastern time, both nights. Life, Liberty, and Levin, don't miss it. It's an event. I hope we'll see you there. The week is officially over. The weekend begins right now. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel, freedom fighters all over the world, in Ukraine, and our brothers and sisters in Israel. Good night, Spritey and Griffey and Pepsi. Good night, Zelda, Smokey, Gigi. Good night, Indy. My beautiful Barney, Patton, Rory. Good night, Marty. Good night, Dad. Good night, Mom. Good night, Leo. Good night, Joe. Good night, Teddy. Good night, Bernie. And good night, America. America.